All right, everyone, welcome back with us. Another Addicted Fishing tutorial. And this is part three to a little series that we've done talking all about worms. We've been trying to get super in depth with you guys and just talk about all the different ways you can fish them, colors, sizes, and all these different presentations. What are you gonna talk about today, dude? Well, we're gonna cover third base, and that is the drift fishing of a worm. It's something a lot of people who really like worms and have fished them for a long time do. And again, certain conditions, certain kind of runs, certain areas where you wanna get a different presentation of those fish and keep that worm down and in their face for a long time. So we're gonna show you, we're gonna show you the different setup, my favorite setup, length of leader, the worms, everything you guys stay tuned is coming at you right now. All right, everybody, so to get this started, we're gonna go over the rod. Normally when I want a drift fish, and when you have drift fish for a long time, you're gonna graduate into a bait caster rod. And why I think a bait caster is a little more effective is because of the way you hold the rod in your hand. It allows more sensitivity through the rod into your foregrips and into your hand so that you can detect bottom and detect the structure on the bottom, which is most important. Because the biggest pet peeve to a lot of people about drift fishing is how much you snag up. So the rod selection is really key in that so that there's a lot of sensitivity to avoid that snagging. So what I have here is something that's special that won't come out until 2020 at the Portland Sportsman Show is the Okuma X Drift Fishing Rod Series. What this is, it's a 9.9, 8 to 15 pound rod. It is one of the best drift fishing rods I've ever seen in the last couple of years at least. It's my favorite, casts very nice with a lot of little weight. Today we're gonna to have a little bit more weight on here, but it casts a little weight very easily. It has a great sensitivity and it has a lot of backbone for fighting these fish. Any rod selection is fine in this drift fishing setup, but you want it about a little bit over eight and a half feet. Eight and a half feet to nine and a half feet is the realm I want for drift fishing rod because any more length is gonna take away from my sensitivity. And in that more flexible rod, you want something that's that eight to 15 pound medium action, but fast action rod, because again, it generates and it translates a lot of that sensitivity down the line. I have this reel with an Okuma Helios reel, 30 pound test. I like a little bit lighter braided line on this setup if I'm gonna be drift fishing anything because it cuts through the water better. It gets down to the bottom and allows you to cut through that fast water and be on bottom without a ton of line drag with a 40 or a 50 pound test which gets a lot of drag from the current and makes your presentation go too fast. So what I like to do on that, it's not necessary, but I like to do it so I'm not leaving any braid in the river when I do snag, is add a little bumper. I have a 20 pound test on here, about four or five feet, tied in with a uni knot. You can use a blood knot, you can use an Alberto, anything that you want to get that bumper on there. But I tie about four to five feet. Length isn't super crucial on that unless you have gin clear water. So now off of that, this is one of the easier setups. This is how I like to set it up, very quick and easy. It's easy to have this stuff in your pocket. I can walk to the river with just a bag full of worms, my one little tackle box, and be fishing all day with a little spool of line. So what I'm gonna do here is just, just a normal barrel swivel with a clasp on the end. You can use a three-way. I, I have three ways in here. I just didn't grab it when I went down to grab that, but I'm gonna use a normal barrel swivel. I like to tie my 20-pound test, my heavy braid, or my, my heavy fluoro, to the side with the clevis that I'm gonna put the weight on. So that when I do snag and I am pulling on that, I'm not pulling on the end with the leader line so that I'm breaking my worm off every time. So I'd rather pull just the weight off of that clevis and have it on that tougher line here, that 20 pound on the top end of this barrel swivel here. So I'm gonna tie just a normal fisherman's knot, connect this bad boy just like so. So I have my barrel swivel with that clasp swinging freely down below it. And that's what I'm gonna add my weight to. Here today, it's a little bit ripping. We got some high water. So I'm gonna go with a 15 pound test and length of your leader is very crucial for this worm fishing, drift fishing, because the worm is extremely, has a lot of flotation. It's extremely buoyant when you get it down in that strike zone. So a shorter leader is gonna be necessary to keep it in that small zone between those fish. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go about three and a half feet. I'm gonna use a little bit of this as I tie my knots, but three and a half feet, nothing over four is what's gonna be appropriate for drift fishing a worm. Again, so you can keep that buoyant presentation right in front of the fish. So I'm gonna go back to my barrel swivel here. Tie my 15 pound test to the other end. And we're off to the races. Okay, so now here is the most important part. And this is probably the biggest question a lot of you are gonna ask is, how do you get the worm on your line? There's a few different methods. I like to just do it with the hook, which I'm gonna show you here. You can take a worm threader with you to the river, but for me, it usually gets smashed in my bag or something happens to it, I lose it, so I don't have the worm threader with me, but there's a perfectly easy way to use just the hook itself to get this done. So what I have here is a number two mustad hook. 
I'm just using a bead hook here. You can use any kind of octopus style hook or any kind of hook up to like a maybe a one or a two aught, not a two aught, but a number two hook or maybe even a number one. Because you want a little bit bigger hook so that these fish, when they go for that big worm, there's a hook there that they can grab that's not tiny and you can get that hook buried in their mouth. So what I'm gonna, just gonna do here is to start threading my worms, I'm just gonna tie kind of a, a little chintzy knot, three or four wraps, just to secure that hook to my line. And this is the way I'm gonna do it without a worm threader. Normally I'd tie a really good knot, use the worm threader and pull it through, but I'm just gonna tie that little tab on there just like so. I'm gonna go into my bag here and I'm gonna grab me an addicted worm. Having a good variety of worms and a good variety of colors on most days is what's gonna be really important to making you really effective fishing these. I'm gonna go with something a little bit shorter today. This is one that I've already cut down. Our addicted steelhead worms come in six inch, which work really nicely for this because the day I'm gonna be drift fishing a worm is a day that I have a lot of water velocity and I want my presentation down and on those fish in a hurry. So I'm gonna grab one more of these worms here and show you guys. And this is the one I'm actually gonna go with today. All right, well, I'm gonna go with my favorite, the red haze. Now this one's in the full six inch mode. I'm not gonna rig all that six inch on there. What I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna go down. I like to cut it right on the R. It says Mad River on this worm. I'm gonna cut it right at the R. That seems to be my favorite length, just like so. I'm gonna throw that back in my bag and set it on the bank. And this is what's the crucial part, you guys. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna plant that hook right through the top of that flat spot on the worm that I created by cutting it. And I'm gonna start to keep it, keep that line that runs down the side of the worm right in line with my hook shank the entire time. And I'm just gonna start feeding that thing on the best I can, just like so. And what I like to do is I like to put my thumb on top of the hook using my forefinger, my index finger, and my middle finger to pull that material down that hook shank just like so. And this is why a bigger hook helps more on this presentation because it allows you to thread it on there a little bit better. Once it's made it past that shank, I'm gonna pull down on one side, pull it through the other, pull down on one side, pull it through the other until I get about halfway down that worm. Again, you wanna try to match the distance to that worm kind of like you would with the fixed jig setup. You want that to sit in that proper spot in that, that worm length so that when the fish grabs it, you get a good hook set in. So I've gone about three quarters of the way or about halfway through. Now I'm gonna continue to thread it up. I poked it through the side of the worm and I'm just gonna pull that right down my line just like so. Now you're gonna see the reason why I used that chintzy knot because I'm gonna cut it anyways. And this is probably the most important part in my ass, in my mind of fishing this worm so that it doesn't slide down. Again, you're gonna be dragging, you're gonna be hitting bottom. You don't want that worm to slide down and bunch up on itself. You want it to stay straight and linear as it goes through that presentation. So what I'm gonna do to make that worm not slide over my hook every time is I'm gonna add just a little six mil bead. You can use an eight, you can use a 10, you can use a corky, you can use any amount of things to sit below that worm, but what that's gonna do is it's gonna block the hole I made by sliding the hook through and allow me to not have that worm slide down every single time, just like so. And I got that tail facing towards the hook. You can also rig this upside down the complete opposite way, a wacky rig, still putting the corky in line and adding your hook down here at the bottom. So now I'm gonna grab my number two must add bead hook here. I'm gonna do just a normal fisherman's knot, just like so, seven wraps. Let that line, pull it tight, and we're good to go. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slide that worm down ever so gently to where that bead is actually touching my hook. And that is so you have good hook placement in that worm. You see how it's about three quarters of the way through down towards the tail end. So when that fish comes up and grabs that worm, that thing's planted right in the top of their mouth or right in the side. And you have a great hook set as it bounces off the bottom and rips the rod right out of your hand. So now we're gonna go to the weight. What I'm gonna use here today, just because we have an interesting rock bottom, a lot of big boulders and stuff, I'm gonna use one of these Dave's Tangle Free. And the reason I like some of these, these tangle free weights like this is because of that rubber coating on them. They bounce along the rocks really nicely. You know, they have the bouncing beddies. We see those a lot out here in the Pacific Northwest. A lot of places they use split shot, anything like that. But adding that line down to the bottom clevis that I created before, just like so, adding that weight. And this is a half ounce float. You can also use something like this. This is a piece of pencil lead that I've just punched a hole out. This goes right through this eye as well. If you undo the clevis, put it right through that little eye that I've created in that pencil lead. And this creates a little more drag. The lead sticks to the bottom, but we like to be a little eco-friendly and not use as much lead if we don't have to. But on a high water day or a fast water situation, the lead's gonna help you a lot by slowing that presentation down. So there it is, everybody. There's our full setup. We got our 9.9 rod, 30 pound braid, all the way down to my 20 pound bumper three-way swivel in between with my half ounce lead, about a three foot liter down to my addicted worm and my little six mil bead. 
and now we're fishing. So follow me into the river. We're gonna talk about how to drift fish, the technique, and what kind of water you're gonna look for to use this. All right, everybody. So drift fishing is not a technique you wanna to try to use in every sort of water situation. And what I mean by that is the sort of structure that you're looking for. The best place this works is an area that's a, basically a perfect steelhead run. It's about six to 10 feet deep, has a straight current and normal structure. It's not a lot of big ledges, not a lot of giant boulders, like as big as a, say, a Volkswagen or anything like that. You wanna be able to find that area where you're gonna be able to get a long presentation down through the run and fish your way through. So tail outs, any kind of buckets, the top of the run and in heavier current is where this is gonna be more effective than using it, say, on a float like we've shown you in our previous tutorials. So what you wanna to do to drift fish, you have it here, you wanna always reel up pretty close to your tip to pass these bait casters, it's crucial, so that you can get a good swing and get that presentation out there. So I'm gonna go about six inches out of my tip. I'm gonna cast it about a 45 degree up river and I'm immediately gonna close my bail. And the, the biggest key to this drift fishing is you wanna follow your line with your tip. And what that does is it increases the sensitivity that you have with your line on the bottom. The, the whole thing that we're trying to do here is keep this as close to the bottom as possible and actually drag it across the bottom. So pursuit angle by casting it a 45 up, reeling up your slack, hitting bottom, and then fishing it across that bottom in that zone where you know those fish are gonna be is the proper presentation. I'm gonna do it again, cast that at about a 45. Again, following that presentation all the way through with your rod tip. Because what happens is if you point your tip out in one direction and you keep yourself stationary with your rod tip, you lose all sensitivity and it creates more line drag. So following that presentation through, letting it drag along the bottom and keeping it in that strike zone is what makes it as effective as possible. So because drift fishing is very stationary and you're fishing from point A to point B, you can also side drift this presentation out of a boat but using your feet or using your boat and moving to the pockets in the river is what's gonna be crucial. You're gonna treat this presentation a lot like fishing hardware. You're gonna start close, you're gonna to go to the middle, you're gonna go far, and then you're gonna take two steps. So having a good tail out or being in a boat and moving down along the run is what's gonna utilize this method the most. Being able to cover the water because we don't have the float set up where we can just let it run straight down. But our advantages are setups on bottom and right in those fish's face. All right, everybody. Well, there it is. That's the three things you need to know about worm fishing. Every technique that we've showed you so far is incredibly effective in its own situation. That's why we show them to you because you shouldn't just be a one trick pony with these worms. No, absolutely not. You gotta have all these different methods underneath your belt to help you get out here and catch fish. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully you guys learned something. Be sure to tap that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications because we have a bunch more cool stuff coming, a bunch more educational, and we have some special trips planned this year. We're gonna be going around the country doing some cool things, I think. And if you guys haven't seen this full part of this series, be sure to go back down here below, click those links, get to that YouTube channel, and see the rest of those videos that we came out showing the fixed float, the slide float, and then the drift fishing one. So. Absolutely, and thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we got some links in the description below and some special discount codes for you addicts only to get on our website and buy some of these addicted steelhead worms and get out and get some fish before these big wilds start showing up. Yeah. And I know a lot of you guys in the Midwest are already catching fish, so comment below, let us know how your fishing's been this season for everyone, and we'll see you on the river. Later, guys.